The National Lotteries Commission in Darba is currently underway at the uh, Birchwood Hotel in Boxburg. So to give you a bit of background, Commission was established in 2011 and uh, the aim was to regulate the National Lottery as well as other lotteries, including society lotteries to raise funds and promotional competitions. Let's go over, uh, cross over now to Palessa. She's currently attending the Indaba and I think she's about to host a panel discussion. Palessa, good morning to you and your guests. Lian, it's a very good morning to you and thank you so much, of course, and a very good morning to our viewers watching on SABC2 and SABC News Channel 404. As Lian said, this morning we come to you live from uh, the Betchwood Hotel in Boxbeck. We are in Gauteng province for the National Lottery Commission uh, Indaba. This is the fifth installment of the Indaba as it started officially back in 2011. So uh, they look into the important issues, including the issue of funding. I think that is what most people watching from home want to hear. How can our NGOs and NPOs be funded. So this is the right platform. And if you do have any questions at Money Live SABC, it's our Twitter handle at Balesa Chubisi. That's my personal account. I use hashtag NLC. Um, I'll be able to uh, convey your questions and any other comments that you might have to the panel here. So even if you are a beneficiary of uh, the NLC, talk to us. Tell us how uh, you know uh, your your life or that of your NGO has changed and uh, the impact that their funding has had on your NGO or NPO. All right. But for now, let me introduce you to our panel this morning. We have uh, Professor Alfred uh, Nebutanda. He's the National Lottery Board Chairperson, Prof. Andi Macheroni. And we also have a commissioner from the NLC, Umam Shalot Emampan. Uh, Umam Shalot, good morning to you and thank you so much for coming through. But also on uh, the other hand, we have the chairperson of uh, the Portfolio Committee for the Department of Trade and Industry, uh, Joan uh, Fabs. Good morning to you and thank you so much for coming through. Thank you so much indeed. Most importantly, as I said, it's all about the beneficiaries. We have them here represented in huge numbers and I'm told all from the nine provinces across South Africa. So we are going to be um, talking to them as well just to tell us a little bit about their stories and of course the impact that the lottery's funding has had on their NGOs. At Morning Live SABC, remember, that's the Twitter handle at Palace Ashubis, hashtag NLC. Prof, let's start with you. Take us back to the days of the National Lottery Board um, to now the National Lottery Commission. All right, Prof. Um, it looks like we having some problems, Senyana, with your microphone. Let's just get uh, that sorted. Let's, okay, let's thank try you it. very much. There we are. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No. No. Uh, it's, it's a very good moment uh, for for me to give a narration where we have started and where we are now. Yes, we started as National Lotteries Board which was a, a name confusing to the public, whether you're talking of board of directors or whether you're talking of the organization. Therefore, uh, from the time that we were National Lotteries Board, um, it was uh, an organization that had so many problems. When I took over with the previous board in 2009, we had a, a backlog, a very large backlog. It was a taboo to go to parliament, to face parliament, mm -hmm. because organizations will phone either the minister or the chairperson that monies of the lottery is not distributed. So, uh, around 2011, we felt that people shall govern. And therefore, It is 5 p.m. Central African time, broadcasting live from Johannesburg. This is for your news.
Mugabe is wanted in South Africa on a charge of assault with intent to do grievous bodily harm. Mugabe allegedly assaulted local model Gabriela Engels with an extension cord. If the minister has uh, granted the first lady diplomatic immunity, then it, it, it then means that she, she will not be prosecuted. There will now be 16 countries that form part of SEDEC. The Comoros was added as a member state during this summit. New Zealand rugby great Sir Colin Meads has passed away at the age of 81 following the battle with the pancreatic cancer. In 1999, Meads was named New Zealand's greatest rugby player of the 20th century. This year, the bronze statue of Meads was unveiled in his hometown of Tekuti. Stay tuned to PM News for all your news updates every Saturday and Sunday from 1500 hours. Job Mbo Africa, welcome to the newsroom. I'm Elvis Preslin. Let us build our continent brick by brick, stone by stone, until we achieve. Plus, I'd ask the court to review and cancel the contract after adverse findings by both the Auditor General as well as the public protector. Well, Christianity is under attack globally. It has been from the beginning of time. Get all the dominating stories locally and globally on Newsroom every Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. He's still going, he pops it up, he's going to see the sun. Easy as that, what a response it is from the teachers, brilliant score. Imran Tahir produced a superb performance with the ball. The protest leg spinner put his side in the driving seat, scalping three wickets for just 18 runs. Gifton Gope is flying toward third and he is there with a trip, trip. Triple, his first in the big leagues. It is a Ferrari front row lockout. Unless Hamilton can get on pole and he can't. Ferrari for the first time since France in 2008 have locked out the front row. For all your sports news, keep it locked to Sports Live every Saturday and Sunday from 2030. All right, and uh, welcome back. I sincere apologies on that one. We lost uh, a sound and link, but everything, I believe, is back to normal now as we continue our discussion on the National Lottery. It's the first day today, and the, uh, the end up will end uh, uh, tomorrow. Prof, you were still telling us that previously um, things were not in order, but everything is uh, normal now. Yes, a lot of money was uh, in our uh, bank accounts, and it was not going to the beneficiaries and we we did a survey to say what would you want your money go to between the arts charity and sport if you are playing lot a uh, lotto what would you uh, want people to behave as distributors of that money and the public told us we called the first indaba and we address the endeavor to say tell us and uh, i remember one of one of uh, the beneficiary stood on the table to lambast us and we listened yeah. we corrected our ways yeah. and the parliament was also on our side to say because of this in fact there was a match which was orchestrated i don't know from where uh, it it marched to the nlc uh, fortunately, I was there. I went to accept the memorandum, mm. and I promised, uh, I promised the marchers that we are going to change. Indeed, uh, the second in Daba, if not the third, I came up with the, you know, the talk that says the road ne uh, uh, tra uh, less travelled. Just to say. The lottery from from this endeavor yeah. must change completely, and we went to Parliament and give them All right. quick wins. Let's hear from Parliament if indeed your house is old, is in order now, um, and uh, if you can just give the microphone to the chairperson of the DTI Portfolio Committee. Joan, is everything in normal now at NLC? Well, um, I think the prof is, uh, Professor Nebutande is quite correct. We were very unhappy about a decade ago 
very unhappy. There was so much money in the coffers, beneficiaries, potential beneficiaries were complaining. Where is this money? But I must say, over the years, the engagement with beneficiaries by the National Lotteries Commission has been very effective. That relationship with the grassroots, with the grassroots saying, this is where we want our money to go. We can gamble on in any way we like. Why do we also gamble through the National Lotteries? They gamble through that because the revenue that comes from their gambling actually goes back to sports, charities and other good causes. But then provinces would also complain in Parliament, for example, the Northern Cape, and say, well, where is our money? And uh, Limpopo would complain. So we called in the National Lotteries Commission and they gave a very, very effective and detailed response. The reality is that the Northern Cape is getting more than its share, if you think of the population, the uh, developments in that direction for charities, for rehabilitation areas and the like, and also Limpopo. Mm. So every area of our country, from the urban to the rural, has been effectively dealt with. But in Parliament, our concern is governance as well. Are you looking after this money effectively? Are you optimizing it? They established an investment account as well. And I'm happy to tell you that the Auditor General gave the National Lotteries Commission a clean audit, not just an unqualified, a clean. clean. Yeah. Now that, I can tell you, is seldom the case. Wow. Well, of course, that deserves a round of applause. The good work being done there by the NLC. Let's quickly uh, move on to Meshalota Mampani, is one of the commissioner who has been with the commission, of course, for uh, quite a long time. Now, good morning to you again, <laughs> Mampani. Yes, let's, let, let's talk about the theme more so for the Sindama. Um, funding for impact. I know that has become quite a buzzword now for um, many organizations in terms of their corporate social investment programs. Okay, thank you, Palisa, and to our listeners and the beautiful audience here. Uh, funding for impact, it's a, a concept that the board, as the Lotteries Commission was evolving, came up with to say, we're funding everything and everything. Can we now look at funding tangibles, things uh, that will last, will be like a legacy for the National Lotteries Commission. And one of the things we got to do, because we are implementers as administrators, we then came up with a proposal to the board that, uh, you know, indicated that there was a need for us to look at the infrastructure area and as a result we started with a huge project where we built more than 200 early childhood development centers nice. in the rural, prov uh, rural areas across, across all the provinces for our people. But not that only. You'll recall that last year we had a challenge uh, of the country experiencing the first severe drought and uh, that's the time as well we got to give a proposal to the board that we should go and drill boreholes for those communities that did not have water. Uh, we're in the process as well of expanding a very interesting project as you know our country is experiencing problems with the scourge of uh, drugs, drug abuse and alcohol abuse we're building rehabilitation centers. We have three already in three provinces and we're continuing to do that in other provinces. The other huge project that the board recently approved is for us to build old age homes for our people in those areas. So um, funding for impact has to do with funding tangible projects yeah. and uh, we'll be taking our beneficiaries through that. We don't just tell them what they must do. They also come up with 
brilliant suggestions. Most of the things that we've been able to implement were actually through these engagements where we get to meet once after every year and just listen to their needs and wants and see how we can actually deliver on this important public good. Well, that's beautiful initiatives by the NLC. So I believe it's, it's not just for playing the lottery and winning the lottery. It's for, it's for a good cause. It is, and we, we're encouraging our people most of the time that it's not about winning only. Yeah. Know that if you have spent five friends and you didn't win, mm. that's how you're helping True. to change the lives of ordinary That is what I always say all the time. Well, at Money Live SABC, it's our Twitter handle at Balisa Shubisi, um, hashtag NLC. Talk to us about anything, questions, comments that you might have. Uh, that's the Twitter handle that we're using this morning. Let's take an ad and, and break here on Morning Live. When we come back, I would uh, want us to talk to some of the beneficiaries and see how uh, the funding has impacted on their NGOs. Stay tuned.